It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. Do you get hungover? Sometimes. I mean, now that I'm getting older, for sure, um, but not as many, not as much as a normal person. Well, when you drink, do you remember to, like, hydrate? And do you remember to, like, eat a lot of food as you're drinking? No way, never, neither, neither. Because I feel like drunk people, like, you'll do that if it's there, but it's not like you're trying to seek it. Sometimes even when I do that, that those are the next mornings when I don't feel good because I, like, I eat too much now or, like, you know what I mean? Or, like, oh. I can't sleep because I got to pee every 10 minutes. You um, overcompensated. I, uh, I, I, I smoke in the habit of goo, you yeah, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And that actually counteracts the badness of the alcohol so that I don't have Not a... for me, dude. When I smoke in the habit of habit do, no? I am fucked up, dude. Well, my night's fucked. I mean, I didn't say that my night's not fucked. I'm just saying the next morning isn't. Um, did I tell you about that one time in, uh, it was like at a high school party and I was feeling so fucking cool because I was probably like seven shots in of some shitty vodka and <laughs> the people were like, Hey Christian, you should freestyle. And I was like, so I was freestyling like crazy. You didn't and even need seven shots of vodka to do that. No dude, but the vodka definitely helped with the liquid confidence, right? So you say. And so I was so, uh, I was so overconfident, cocky if you may, that I was like, okay, I want, I, I'm feeling like in a good pocket. Let me get like a little more fucked up. And so someone had a bubbler. And uh, <laughs> and so we were in this bathroom. I hit this bubbler so Ripped hard. It. Ripped it. Ripped it like a lawn or a cord. It's to the point where I accidentally drank the bubbler <laughs> water. I drank the bubbler water. I mean, everybody's done that for sure, but that's, yes. No one's ever done it in front of 10 other people. And like, no, I, I, oh, really? In a, in a group? Everybody makes that mistake. Honestly, dude, that's, you know, when you're, when you're a stoner, that mistake happens. It happens. Damn, dude. And like, there's no going. How can you choke on bubbler water and still play it off? You just got to go. If you drink it, you get higher. Think that's how it works, man. It's not at all, but that's how I would have played it off. Mm-hmm. And know? then, like, turn turn your uh, turn the other way yeah. so no one sees you crying. And then just <laughs> one tear. <laughs> um, no, what you got to do is hand it to the dumbest person in the circle, and then be like, "If you drink it, you get higher." And then see if they like take a big sip. But if they do it now, at that point, you're like, "Phew, idiot!" I'm now not the, the idiot. Him. Uh-huh. That's what it is. See, this is how I get out of being bullied. I turn it on someone. I'm the judo of bullying. Uh-huh. Where like if I think I'm kind of going to be the butt of the joke, I turn yeah. and make someone else the butt of the joke. It seems like social environments are, that's the animal kingdom. Oh, yes. That's like, yeah. that's where the pecking order arrives. It's and everything. parties. And then like what's worse than parties in terms of like the animal kingdom are bar. like clubs, bars. Yes. 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 Like talking to strangers and like having to put on a facade to seem to seem alpha like you know guys are trying to be alpha in bars or in social environments i like to play the other game and not be the alpha recently i was at a bar um doing the thing that i do Uh and i ordered a cosmopolitan interesting because i don't think drinks come with a gender Mm, right i'm not asking i'm not asking for a cosmo with a dick in it Mm mm-hmm no, of course, that's not what you're asking for. And if it tastes good and does the job. It honestly, it does. Th- I don't understand what the, the weird, something about masculinity I don't understand. Like, why do we have to, like, drink shitty scotch? I don't like scotch. We don't have to. We don't have to. No, but I, okay, you're right, we don't have to. But I've been out with men who, like, scoff at me when I order Jameson because, like, it's not even a real whiskey. And they're like, you drink this. I'm like, I don't like scotch. I don't want to drink this. Yeah. I don't enjoy scotch. Like, I know what I like mm-hmm. and I know what I don't like. Like, and honestly, you probably don't like this either. You're probably just drinking this just to, like, prove a point to me that you're, like, better or something. It's like, honestly, dude, you're not winning. Oh, yeah, there's, it's. You know, you know those men? Of course I do. Of course I do. Um, I don't realize why there's an association with the type of drink that you get. I mean, like, drink whatever the hell you want to drink. Just don't be sloppy, and I don't want to, like, pick up your mess later on. Even when I was a bartender, and I'd, like, I'd have guys be like, hey, man, can I get, like, a lemon drop? And I'd be like, do you want me to put it on the rocks for you? And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. please. Honestly, do that. Okay, as a bartender, though, did this question piss you off? What's your cheapest, strongest drink? Uh, yeah, because that's a shot of whiskey. Mm-hmm. And then they'll be like, ugh, I don't do that. Yeah, okay, so then get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. It's like, what are you asking me then? Mm-hmm. You want me to be like, oh, let me whip up this thing out of my ass and then only charge you for one thing? Like, no, that's not how it works. Definitely not at the Cheesecake Factory. Maybe at a dive bar somebody can make you something. But like, um, what I enjoyed more was people being like, I used to have this people who would come in maybe about once a month. 
maybe a little bit less than that. But I always remember them because they'd come in and say like, hey, what's the worst drink you had to make this month? Wow. And so like, uh, and I'd be like, oh man. So I got to make some fun, gross drinks for them. Like I made, um, I made a, 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 it's called a gorilla fart for them once. Um, what a gor- the fuck's a gorilla fart? A gorilla fart is a shot of vodka with a floater of scotch. Okay. Really? With the floater of scotch? It's called a gorilla fart. Uh, for a reason. Um, gorilla, I mean, literally speaking. A gorilla fart sounds maybe like maybe the worst thing ever. You know the 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 map Nuketown in Call of Duty. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That sounds like it was destroyed by a, a gorilla, gorilla fart. fart. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That's the backstory, actually. Do you miss being a bartender? I miss making drinks. Okay. I don't necessarily miss um, serving people anymore. But you want to do that in a casual setting, I'm sure. Like you'd be down to do it at a party. Um, <sighs> I have I have been at parties and like I somehow I always end up making drinks at parties. Actually, I have seen you at a party that we've been to uh, probably like sometime last year where people there was a drunk motherfucker just saying, "Hey, Alex, can uh these are the th- uh, with the ingredients that we yeah. have here. Can you make something?" And I could see it in your face because I know you a little bit more. You're just kind of like, "Yeah, I'll make you something," but you're also just like, "What the fuck, man? I'm just trying to chill." You know what I made that guy? What whiskey and apple juice? Oh, and they were like, "I fuck." I love it. They're like, that's all you're going to make? I'm like, yep, that's what I'm going to make you right now. Mm. You know what I mean? Because it's like, again, it's the same reason why like, I don't like to do magic on call. Like, I don't like when people bring up magic in a conversation. Yeah. I was out with a friend of the show, Juliet, not that long ago, and we were at a bar, and I was meeting some new people, um, and I was kind of like rustling around in my pockets, and you know, if you know me, you kind of know what I'm doing if I'm rustling in my pockets for stuff. And she was like, you're about to do a magic trick? And I was like, <laughs> not now. I was like, not now that you said something. Okay, it just has to be organic. Yeah, I met this girl's parents a long time ago, um, and she was like, "Do you want to show them a magic trick?" And I was like, "No, not now." I was like, "It has to, it has to come up." Like, and then that being said, like a couple of minutes, thirty, forty-five minutes later, I did bring up like, "Hey, you guys want to see a magic trick?" Like, yeah. it can be brought up, but it can't be like, "Here, let's play it off. Let's let, let's do like a little little uh, improv scene right now." I'll try to be, I'll try to be like uh, your magic uh, assistant. Right, you are, and you've you've done it both good and bad. Just so you know, in real world scenarios, you've okay. both set me up in a really great way, and then you've also kind of like fuck fucked it. So like, and then that night I just didn't end up to do a trick <laughs> because like, and that, but now I'm because, like, I'm pretty good at it. About it, it. I, I know now uh, that you shouldn't say in front of like a large group of people like, hey, this person can dance. Oh, dance for me, dance. You, don't you feel like a monkey? Yeah. Or like when people say like. Uh, it's flattering, for sure. When people say, you know, Christian can sing, and then there's that dude is just like, really? Honestly, I always tell people to just wait. You'll probably start singing before the night's over. Mm-hmm. Something like that. On- honestly, and like, that's a little more organic. I tell people that all the time. People are like, so Christian can sing. Like people who just met you. I have a couple. I just I have a friend who met you uh, only a couple of times, and like you guys know each other because of me. It's a mutual friend. Did she ask if I could sing or something? She did, and I was like, and honestly, this was to my face. When no, I met she her? she asked me about it. She's like, I heard he like he's a really good singer, and I was like, he is. I was like, and you know what? Honestly, if you hang out with him for any amount of time, it'll come up, dude. That's what it is. Like, like just like just like my magic, it'll come up. Because like yes, just when, let it come. When up. you feel comfortable with the people. Like yeah. even with like guests that we've had on the show before, like your first thing, a guest that we've had on the show before that you've never met mm-hmm. and I've introduced to you, um, you're not going to be like, hi, my name's Alejandro. Do you want to see a magic trick? It almost never works like that. Yeah. Unless you're a hired magician at a wedding. Yes. You can't like walk up to people cold and just be like, you want to see a trick? That's like me hugging, like me meeting a person, hugging them and being like, okay, uh, we're going to do uh, fly me to the moon in the key of D. And then like uh, a piano are you ready? rolls up behind you and they're just yeah. like, what the fuck is happening What here? the fuck? I'm just trying to chill and have on, a like, drink. a dinner coat and stuff yeah. and like have a mic. I do want to be in a situation, in a comedic situation <laughs> where I'm performing <laughs> and like I bomb and like a long ass cane comes and pulls me off stage. Honestly, bro, that's like the worst. That's like my worst fear. <laughs> A cane coming out of nowhere? Because I have bombs in front of people, and I'm just like, I wished a cane would come pull me off. Instead, I have to just sit there for another three minutes because I have five minutes to do a set, and it's just like, uh-huh. I, I... Oh, you're you know talking what? about open mics. You know what, dude? What? You need a bomb more then. If yes. you want a bomb, you clearly need to bomb more. You just, then. I mean, like, okay, if we're going to transition into the setting of, like, an open mic type of thing. Any kind of, but, I mean, yeah. Yes. What, do you, what, do you, what, what kind of scenario, what are you, in a vaudeville show and they're going to fucking cane you off the stage? No way, bro. That seems fitting for, like, a, uh, a an open mic show. place. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Right? If everyone's a comedian, if you can, because you have to get comfortable with bombing if you're going to try to pursue comedy. And but that's how so degrading is the hook, bro? Like, okay. I'm saving. It's just. I, what? You sent a chill down my spine, my friend. Dude, it's hard. It's I'm Bombing is like. 
it gives me this weird tingle in my knees and it's not sexual um it's like my knees are gonna give out yes i bombed in front of a girl i was dating once and on the drive oh no on the drive back home it was quiet and she looks at me and she goes you know Maybe stand-up comedy isn't your thing. No, that's fucked up, dude. Maybe, but in my mind, I was like, what the fuck does she know? She doesn't know stand-up comedy anyways. That. That's why, no stand-up like, comedy. that's why I didn't really take much heart to it. But at the same time, of course, it like it hurt. She cared about me in that moment. And yeah. she wasn't, maybe she was saying it to get me hurt. But anyways, I don't think she was. I think her intention was to like, hey, that clearly was very rough for you. Mm-hmm. Maybe don't try that again, right? Like if I would have like jumped into a, a pile of glass, yes. I bet you she, when they'll drive home, she'd be like, hey. Maybe maybe don't jump into that pile of glass anymore, right? That's pretty much what she saw, mm-hmm. and and so like I get I get the intention. Yes, but also but the delivery makes it horrible, sound even more horrible. fucked well, up. But, I'm not dating her anymore. And like <laughs> it's the whole yes, and that's saying something. And there's like a whole the context behind it needs to be apparent. Was pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. She needs to be anyone that is watching like live comedy, especially an open mic thing, needs to understand that this is where like aspiring comedians come to like work on their material that being said though she had seen me bomb at least three or four times that was the worst bomb i'd ever done in front of her it was bad and that's i had i I did a really bad r kelly joke that just like i thought was gonna be my killer i Uh thought it was gonna be really good so so i moved it up in my set (laughs) i moved it up to like my second joke because the first joke sucked and then that bombed and literally uh i had somebody in the crowd be like i like r kelly and i was just like i i i I, uh." (laughs) So I, you know what? And that guy's fucked now. <laughs> His music's like pretty nice, but like, because my know. whole thing, my whole thing was, I, I can't even remember the whole bit. You probably heard it, but the bit was like, um, you know, it's easy for me to not listen to R. Kelly anymore because right, right, but when the whole thing happened, yeah, um, I was like, it's easy for me to not listen to R. Kelly anymore. Honestly, I didn't really like R. Kelly's music in the first place. I was like, but you know whose music I'm not gonna not listen to? It's Michael Jackson. I honestly, I'm not gonna go to a wedding and not hear Michael Jackson. It's just we have to hear Michael Jackson. Yeah, and um, fairly decent bit. That's, Definitely needs some work. That's funny. Like the idea is there, but since it's so, especially it since we're doing it, room. It was a. It was. I was not prepared. I was very nervous and clammy and sweaty. And it was the Bay Area. We were in Oakland. We were. Yeah, you know exactly what. And room so I'm a lot of about. like a lot of like politically uh, correct people are in the room even with a comedy thing and also like a weird r kelly fan there was there too like a r kelly defender that was like that really threw me on my heels because yeah, i was like i thought hard. i thought i'd have everybody in this crowd on the r kelly joke and yeah like nope. ev- fuck r kelly his documentary nope. had just dropped right he, i think it surviving was the, r kelly i think it was the week of the gale interview Shit. when he stormed off mm-hmm. so like it was very topical and i i remember even like practicing it in the car and being like i only have maybe a week or two to do this bit yeah. like i can't do that bit now you know, you know when, what I mean? It's it's hard. Yeah. I mean, it's like a timely bit. It's not necessarily evergreen. Um, I, I remember with uh, my right before the pandemic hit, I was going to SF and I was trying to hit these like open mic yeah, circuits. You, you invited me. Yes. And then I would go like af- after work if I would mm-hmm, get off early mm-hmm. enough. And um, my coworkers would always say like, hey, like, can we watch you do some stand up comedy? And I'm like, fuck, no. <laughs> like, I'm working on my shit because they think I'm a funny guy. at work. For sure. For sure. But, you know, being funny and candid in the moment is not stand up comedy where everything's prepared. Do you ever see? I know I've seen it, but um, but like, have you ever gone to an open mic um, where there's clearly a guy who's the funny guy in the office? Yeah. And everybody has been like, you just try to stand up. You should do the open mic next week at, at Chuckles. Uh-huh. And so like also like he's been up there, but has never done in, or like has never done comedy before and doesn't realize like shit's like written and like crafted in form so he's just up there shooting the shit sometimes they do really good like yeah, every dude. once in a while you'll find somebody who's just a natural but most of the time you just like see him bomb but then you see like his four friends in their suit and tie still laughing for him it's just like that's yep. rough don't worry bro We'll get there, but like, dude. Well, comedy is it's doing stand-up comedy. Half of it's just like stage presence. If you're comfortable on stage, it is a magic trick, dude. Yeah, and then the other half is like uh, perfecting the trick, yeah. right? Pretend, and, pretending like, oh, I didn't mean for this to happen, and yeah. the joke is like, oh, you know, my favorite Bill Ingvall thing is he used to do this all the time. Is where he'd be like, oh, that's a funny little thought I just had. No, it's fucking not. That's no. how you know that's a practice bit. Or the other thing that I liked when Bo Burnham pointed it out was um, when a comedian goes, <laughs> "Here's a real story." That mm-hmm. story is completely made up. Yeah, that's like it's uh what I like. Let Daniel me tell you what Tosh actually happened to me. Daniel Tosh had like a a, a special come out like ten years ago, but it was like true I, stories that I made up. I love Daniel Tosh's specials, and the fact that he says even in the special name, true stories that I made up is like, duh, I'm a so comedian. Mad. Like yep. these stories can come from truthful experiences, but come on, like as comedians, you got to like buff up those stories. Yes, for I did the go stage. to Applebee's. Yeah. 
Did the waiter really spill water on my chest and lick it off? Did I see that girl's titties from across the room? Did I go into the bathroom afterwards and, you know, see what was up with that waitress? Here's the thing. All of those things were false except for one. The one thing that was true, the waiter licking the water off. (laughs) It was water that I poured on myself and the waiter licked (laughs) off. Can you imagine? No, you're going. That's you're comedy, getting sued, baby. dude. That's comedy, baby. If I were, if you were to walk in with the shirt that you have in right now, thank you. Shout out to my friend Sam. Brought this all the way from Hawaii. Beautiful shirt. Thank you. And if you would go to an Applebee's, be like, um, can they I make me manager? Can I <laughs> <laughs> hire that guy that is a, obviously a Hawaiian native? The manager would hand me his keys and be like, "Go fuck my wife. She's home at six. Yes. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine how you could, ex- like, how did you interview for your ma- managerial position in Applebee's? Well, uh, it was happy hour, four to six, and I walked in for happy hour. Man, really? Um, well, I was wearing this shirt, actually. And you ripped it open, and I heard the waitress just, like, was thirsty. That actually came after I got the keys, because now I own the place. Um, but, yeah, I, I just walked in, and they literally just handed me the keys. What a wild hypothetical, if that were to be true, dude. I wonder if you would create more <laughs> friends or enemies with that story, but I, the world may never know. I mean, <laughs> thank you, uh, Tootsie Roll Owl. <laughs> okay, I want to take it back a bit with like our um, with stand up. Uh, w- one of the regrets that I had with the open mic set that I was forming is that I put the funniest thing first. You should put a funny thing first, but you know you got to keep them entertained For sure. throughout. And it wasn't even a good joke; it was just like a one liner. And so I was just, I, I think I went up. Get so and, jazzed on it that you have to spit it out. Yeah, I think I said like um. Yes, I am Filipino, and uh, you know what they say about Filipinos? Uh, Big ass dicks. Uh, My palms are sweating, by the way. (laughs) It's bad, dude. I'm uncomfortable. I'm not good at it at all. And then, like, I somehow transitioned into, like, well, uh, it's a weird day and age where, like, you know, uh, sexting is like sending eggplants. And, uh, uh, you know, and here I am. If only they had, like, a. I'm insecure right now. I don't want to tell my joke on air right now. Why? Because we have no crowd and you're going to get zero laughs anyways? It's just like, well, what's worse is that if I tell this bad joke on air, my glasses are fogging up because I'm so yes, I'm so insecure. I was comfortable right before. I wish we didn't take a step back. Let's talk about Applebee's again. You did this. <laughs> you did this. You did this. You know, fuck it. When we <laughs> go back into just trying to pursue doing open mics. I can't wait. I want to. I want to do it with you. Obviously, you want to do it with people that like are in the same boat as you, for sure. And so that we could understand and help each other. But well, and also, uh, we just watched an incredible short little flick on YouTube. Yes. Um, of a stand-up comedian who does a series of on open micers, and one of the things that I loved most was like the couple of times where I was outside smoking cigarettes with those guys and like making that connection. Um, that that is the life. That for me is the dream and the goal. And like yeah. going from one show to the next show. Um, and I remember even like the girl that I was dating at the time was like, "Come on, let's get out of here." I was like, "No, like this is it. Like this is me, me talking to these guys. Like this is the fucking." Because reason. even when we went to that open mic place in Oakland, we were the outsiders. There was an obvious it's circle of been, comedians there, and, and you could always see the new people there. Yeah, right. Like it was, and sometimes they did good, sometimes they didn't do good, but like there was very clearly a click in this in this um, yeah. bar. What? Yes. And I think that made it harder for us. Of course. Because and we were first timers and it was never, and they made it seem like we, it should have been a comfortable room. Yeah. Right. Like the bartender who was a great guy. I don't, I don't have anything against them. And, and then the host was a great, is a nice, incredibly funny guy too. Um, but it was a tough room. Like just no, yeah. no way about it. It was a tough room. You, do you think it's easier to perform in front of a bunch of other comics that are going through the same shit as you? Or is it easier to perform in front of people that are just there to watch? The second one. I think performing for idiots is better. It's yeah. always better to perform for an idiot. That's how I feel like when I'm like singing. Like I feel way more comfortable if I'm singing in front of someone that's not a musician, that's not a vocalist, for sure. that or is like just not even like a music connoisseur in any shape or fashion. That's easier. But like which is why I like performing in front of like a Bigger crowds in a dark setting, like performing mm. on stage in an auditorium where you can't really see the audience has always been a little more comfortable for me rather than like to bring it back at like a party where there's like a drunk dude that says, I heard you sing. Can you sing for like the three of us sure, right here? Sure, sure, sure. But you do that, though. If I'm drunk enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, but that's the thing, though, is like sometimes you do that and you kill it when you do that. Thank you very much. Um, as opposed to like in in being on stage where you have that essential fourth wall. I mean, I, that brings me back to like when I was taking drama classes and stuff like that. You needed the lights and stuff to complete the scenario. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes, you're on a stage and you only see three walls of this apartment. But when we're on that stage, when we're in that stage, we see there's a fourth 
wall there. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's where breaking the fourth wall comes from. Um, but I just want to get back into performing and doing stuff yeah. for people, dude. Yeah. And and clearly we've been we just did an hour long talk about some shit that we've been working on for like a year and a half now. Yeah. And yeah. like we just want to clearly and watching that guy's video, we just want to make people. Let yeah. Me know. Shout out uh, Abbas Wahad. Um, he is a comedian from. Uh, Canada, Can- Canada, Can- uh, from yeah, Canada, Canada, uh, Ontario. Um, you know how they um, came up with the name Canada? No, how? Everybody was sitting around and they asked them. They said, "Hey, uh, well, why don't? How? What do we name? Uh, what do we? What? What about this country? What do we name it?" Uh-huh. And they're like, "Oh, uh, sorry, I don't. I don't. Need, I didn't know we had to name it." And he goes, "Well, why don't we? Um, how about? Uh, how about we use all of our first names? He's got a C, eh? He's got an N, eh? He's got a D, eh?" <laughs> I've, I haven't heard that one. I was waiting for it. I was like wondering, like, where's he gonna fit Canada into there? That's a clever one. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. What I find interesting is that I have like joke book jokes in my pocket ready to go. I know when you're about to tell me a joke when you say, um, "Hey, did you hear about that one thing?" And you do this specific like hand gesture where you point at me, but you like, you know how gangsters when they point at you with the gun. Not that this has ever happened to me. A gangster's <laughs> never pointed his gat at me, but when they point at you. They'll tilt it this way, but when you're about to tell me a joke, you don't tilt it with your palm facing down. You tell me, you point your finger with your palm facing up, and then you tilt your hey, head. you know that thing? Yeah. Hey, you know that thing? <laughs> yes, and I've seen it in, like, public, uh, like, situations. I'm like, okay, Alejandro's about to tell a joke right now. You're 100% right. You definitely just told everybody one of my, like... <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a secret. It's not, no, but it is a, it is a, it is a setup, mm-hmm. and you're 100% right. It's always, like... Um, the bait and switch thing that yeah. I try and get people to like. I, one time, I, one of my favorite bits that I do to people, especially like strangers when I first met, is if there's a song playing, mm-hmm. I'll be like, "Do you know what? Do you know what's happening?" I'll be like what? And then I'll just like say the next line as it's happening in the song. Like it takes a very <laughs> perfect amount of timing up, and it's very. Spe- it's only ever really worked once or twice. Yeah, that has to be very perfect because like if you're just a little bit off, then they're like, "What the what the fuck are you doing, Not dude?" Good. And I've done that, and it's failed. Uh-huh. But I've also done it really well a couple of times. I miss maybe well, once actually. Now we're like pretty much like by this time. By the time this comes out, we're gonna be both fully vaccinated. We can kiss again. Yes, uh, other people. I mean, I've always kissed my girlfriend, and yeah, I mean, not you and me. I do find people to all. kiss. Yes, that's that's kind of how like it works. Dogs. I kiss a lot of dogs. I don't know if you should. Ah, uh, they okay. What's I the don't thing? kiss them on the mouth, Christian. Oh. I'm fucking weird here. Stop. Shut the fuck up, dude. Come on. Shut the fuck up. I kiss him on the asshole. There's... <laughs> Alejandro, uh, turns out you have worms. <laughs> <laughs> you have worms, but like in your mouth, not in your intestines. That's the weird thing. It's a species of worms that really only originates within uh, dog intestines. A dog intestines, dog anus, dog assholes, and dog butts. So either you're eating dogs... Or you're 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 you're, you're eating, eating dogs' butts. Yes. Either way, I can't be your physician and anymore. And then I just go, okay, fine. But can you look at my dog? He's kind of <laughs> got some things coming out of his butt. It's just a weird happenstance. Man, dog butts are super weird. I'll tell you that. They're kind of gross. Yeah, not 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 a fan. Not what are we doing? Fan. What are we doing? What do you mean? What are we doing? What are we We're doing? We're playing. You're the one that brought up dog butts. <laughs> yes, yes. I am so sorry we got there. Let me take it back a little bit um, to the yes. very beginning. Hi, my name's Alex. Hi, my name is Christian. We never even welcomed the baddies. Dude, we got welcome. So into our hell, what are we, an hour in now? I, I think we're about three hours in, but fuck it. Oh, we'll, we'll, but we'll, fuck it? Yes, but fuck it. Nice. Um, nice. But let's welcome now. Welcome. 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 Uh, to another episode of ICBTB's Highly, Highly Irrelevant. Irrelevant. My name is Alejandro. And my name is Christian. Baddies, I want to just remind you guys to, to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that bell. That means that you're going to get the notifications because that stuff helps. It does. Yes. And tell your friends and family um, because your support just means everything to us. Um, and it's it's been really fun to be able to do this throughout the pandemic and we want to keep doing it for you. We do. Buy our merch um, because it's a... Uh, because this is a free show, but it's not free for us. So buy the merch so it can kind of even out, guys. You like our show? Like our shit! Yes. That's how it works. That's a good way to do it. I'm, I'm, this is a great... Great sales tactic we got going on. Good cop, bad cop. I, I didn't realize say, we could do it in like, can you imagine? Buy our shit. And then you come in and then just like. I'm sorry. I'll anyways, come in. Here's a teddy bear. Here's a teddy bear. For here's $7. your band-aids. 
Seven dollars. I'm just I. People have told me that I could be a good salesman, but like to an extent, I don't think I I, I can. I think um, as a salesman, I think your only flaw in being a salesman is having to do the tactics. That was one of the hardest things for me to get over as a salesman because I because I felt like I was lying to these people. I felt like mm-hmm. I was I, I was withholding something from them. Yeah. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it's like. Uh, no, that's that's just how it is, dude. Like, yeah. if you just gotta kind of like, it's one thing to be selling used cars. It's another thing to be selling booze. Everybody's selling something. Yeah, just gotta just boil it down. When I worked at H and M, I was like a little too honest sometimes. Like they would ask me about like, what do you think of this shirt? Um, not necessarily like on them. You're fat as fuck. <laughs> Next, lady. It looks like you have a, you know how Jupiter has a ring around its planet. That's Saturn. You, uh, Jupiter has a tiny ring. Jupiter does have a tiny ring. But for the purpose of this... <laughs> I think Uranus does. It has a vertical ring. Can we look this up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what planets have rings? Well, now my... Yeah, I was, but Finish your story. I would just... Um, I, I would be brutally honest when I'm uh, talking to these women or like whoever the hell. And like I would just tell them about the poor quality of the, the fabrics that we had on there. Yeah, that's rough. Because yeah. you, Because we know how cheap the clothing is there. And like we feel bad for people. But, yeah, I mean, well, because I'm looking out for them right there and then. I'd rather them. I'd rather have a customer that doesn't buy shit right there. It's not like I was getting commission from H and M. Oh, um, yeah, that also is. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. So I'm gonna be honest. And I have been a commission based salesman though, so it does make a little, little bit of a difference. So sometimes you're gonna have to like puff up uh, what you're selling. Sometimes. Yeah, I think I'll it's not, in the past, not yeah. necessarily puffing up what, what you're selling. You have to just. Um, you just have to know the game, dude. Yeah. Like honestly, it is like people are so easily uh, the way we have it, the way we have it figured out is like let's say there's ten people you need to sell to in your job, right? Yeah. Two people are going to be definite no's. There's nothing you can do, nothing you can say, nothing you can do about it. Two of them are going to be yeses all the way. There's nothing you can say, nothing you can do. They're, they've already come in, ready to go. Those there's four. They're already spoken for. Mm-hmm. It's the six people in the middle are the reason why I have a job. So six people in the middle who are on the fence of what's going on, and I have to convince them one way or another. Yeah. That's, okay. that's where I that have That makes job. sense. I'm going to have people who are hard no's and hard yes's either way. But th- th- those people are going to be those people. You but know? being like a salesperson, you don't. You could be a fucking asshole and just completely lie about the product. Or you could look at it from like what you're saying, a strategic uh, standpoint, where like why are they on the fence about mm-hmm. what and how can I help them come onto this side of the fence? Sure. How can this product actually help them and whatnot? And by having good intentions, I can use sleazy salesman's tactics, and they don't even know. <laughs> Very subtle stuff. Um, body language. Well, I mean, you know, I, I read books about NLP, and, like, I love, like, learning about, like, the psychological aspects of stuff. Like, And, and it's very easy, and I don't mean this to belittle people, um, and I really hope my um, supervisor isn't watching. But, like, it's very easy to do the simple tactic to get people to buy stuff. Yeah. Right? Like... Oh, do you want to come in on Monday at 3.30 or Tuesday at 4.45? Ah, I see what you're saying. Nonetheless, they're coming in. Yeah. You've told me about this. I haven't given you an option to say no. But you, it, but it sounds like you're giving them options. Yeah, and Smart. I am. Smart. Honestly, you could... You know, uh, and, and because here's what your answer is. Yeah, Monday at 3.30 is fine. Or your answer is, you know what? I'm not free until Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday at 5.45 then. I'll see you then. <laughs> you're good at that, dude. I want to come in on Wednesday at 4, 5.45 now. See, so like that, it's, it's those... And like in the beginning, it's hard to get... It's hard to get comfortable saying that shit because you know, like you're kind of like you're kind of fucking with these people. Now you tell me that I do this weird thing, and I don't know how serious it is, but like I, from me being nice in the way that I invite people to things, I say like it's okay, no need to uh, feel obligated, but we're gonna go ahead and do this. And you said that when I've invited you or other people to events, and I say like it's okay if you don't have to go or if you can't come, like there there's no need. Mm-hmm. You say you say that that makes people want to come to that thing even more for sure like reverse psychology yes but mine is completely unintentional well, i'm very rarely will i try to maneuver reverse psychology into something into a situation because you know people are grown grown ups and they could do whatever the fuck they is want is it almost worse that it's unintentional though probably because it just sounds like i'm doing reverse psychology with the best acting but it's just me really thinking like well do you have to wake up early for work tomorrow Giving somebody an out yeah yeah okay then like if you work at 6 a.m tomorrow don't come to the club with us or some shit like that right i think you're using a very specific moment in our life but that's fine that's I, <laughs> I you know we've already talked about it the baddies have heard it if they've listened <laughs> yeah go back to the kaylin episode it's a great episode um, um no but but 
I do also like fucking with you with that because because I know you're not doing it in a reverse psychology way, mm-hmm. but I can point it out to other people and have them see my side. Yes. You know what I mean? And the worst part is when people in a group scenario, when we're hanging Dang out with some peeps, when they take your side and go against me. I love me, it. It's such Especially a, when you know I'm fucking with you too is my favorite bit too. It's such a foreign space. Because what I've realized with us being friends is that I'm. A, it's easy to point out to other people like Alex is. What the? Why the fuck is Alex saying that? And there are people like, are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. why what, is Alex saying what a weirdo. that? Weirdo. Yeah, what a, like what a jerk. Yeah, I don't want Kate Upton to shit on my tits, right? Well, let's whose tits? Sorry, too specific of an example. Not quite. I want to know whose tits she's shitting on. Another Kate Upton. If oh. Kate, <laughs> I didn't know I needed to see that until you just said it. <laughs> two Kate Uptons? Can we re? Can somebody deep fake two girls one cup so that it's two Kate Uptons for me, and then I'll watch it. Oh, speaking of which, after this, after we're done recording today, we did get a link from a friend, David McHugh, and shout out. We got a link from a friend of to the video, two girls one cup, which we did say a few weeks ago. If since a, you've if, never if seen it, if a baddie sends it, I will watch it. Yes. Yes, and so we have to record your reaction, and we have to put that out. We'll we'll do it. We'll do it. Um, I don't know if there are copyright issues. No, it's not, not like for we're reaction doing... videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's good. not like we're putting the actual video in On the it. video because that's horrible. Ugh, I'm not excited. Um, my mom was listening to that episode a little bit, and I came downstairs one night, and she was like, "Christian, what is this two girls one cup?" And I said, "Mom, stop right there." Don't do any more research. Stop listening to that episode. Turn it because off. Go home. You don't want to know. You should have been like, Mom, when you look it up, you have to look up Blue Waffle. Stop. Stop. My mom, in Filipino culture, parents want you to stay in the house for as long as possible. And mm-hmm. my mom has never threatened to kick me out of the house. But that will be the day. The day that I show her two women defecating on each other and eating it like Dole Whip from Disneyland, that's the day that you're going to see your very first Asian homeless person because that guy that, will be me. Hang on. There's a lot of Asian homeless people. Yeah. That's gonna... actually a huge problem in San Francisco. Yes. But I get what you're saying. I understand the, the uh, ghoulish overtone. Yes. Uh, that's it's um, my... That's that's a horrible thing. I did not know how to counteract that except to tell her like it is super gross. Do not watch that. Woof, woof, woof. I wanted to tell you, and Uh I know we were talking um, for like an hour before the mics were recording, but I'm going to Vegas this weekend, baby. Oh, fuck yeah, for the family reunion. No, the family reunion is not happening anymore because of COVID. Yes. But like me, my brother, Melissa, and our cousin Alvin are going to go. Yeah. Alvin, nice. Yes, dude. Alvin. How often does he get that? Um, All the time. I bet. Um, Where are you guys staying? Um, We're staying at my my dad has a timeshare. Uh, Wyndham timeshare that is like so close to the strip why are we not spending more time at, his da- at your dad's timeshare um i don't know why i mean because we usually use it as a family already if there's some left i don't know exactly because timeshares like you get you get you a share lot of the time of-, of owning it yes i understand the concept no i wasn't explaining it to oh, you oh, oh. i was explaining it to myself to try to like understand it <laughs> dang dude <laughs> I'm a little sensitive right now, okay? <laughs> Holy fuck, man. Just be cool, man. Be cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just jealous, actually. That's the truth. <laughs> you were invited, but then it never I happened. I know. I know I was invited, but I've had a very intense work schedule for the last couple of weeks. So. Which makes sense. Uh, you, you're playing a manager position now. You're a big boy. I'm not here to talk about that. <laughs> Tell me about Vegas. So this is going to be the one of the most planned trips that I've ever been on. Because Melissa hasn't been to Vegas since she was like in high school, so this oh, is cool. gonna be her first time going as like a, a full on adult. So yeah, she's she, gonna get her Fat Tuesday. Yep. Um, and we were gonna go to like nice ass restaurants. Hell yeah! It'll be our first time going to a restaurant that actually has like uh, four dollar signs on Yelp. <laughs> so Where are you going Hell's Kitchen? Nobu is. Uh, You're gonna go to Nobu? Yeah, you know about Nobu? Everybody knows Nobu, dude. I don't know, dude. I didn't know about Nobu. The original Nobu's in Malibu. Whoa. Yeah, but uh, that Nobu in Vegas is good, too. Okay, so we're going to go there, and I was looking at how much it costs to get some sashimi, and I'm like, oh, fuck me, right? I'm probably still going to get that sashimi because, like, you know what? Like, I have to. You, you got to have, every once in a while, it's nice to kind of go balls out like that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm going to a restaurant later this weekend um, that I'm very excited for. It's the first time that it's been open since COVID, and it's going to be one of those restaurants where I'm like, I'm not even worried about what's going to happen. I know, I know I'm going to be paying a bunch. Yeah. And so I'm just going to, I don't care. Like every once in a while, 
when when my fam when my brother was visiting, we were in South Lake Tahoe. There was a couple of meals and like breakfasts where I was like, you know what, dude? Like, I, I'll pay for it for everybody, but I don't even. I please don't actually show it to me. Yeah. Just show me where I have to sign, sign, like, and then figure it out later. Yeah, it'll be covered. Don't worry, it's all there. But uh, I just it's just let me feel good about this for right now. Yeah, that's why I avoid looking at my bank statements. I'm just just I just look. Just make sure you have enough when you get there. Yeah, and then and then while you're there, just you know what I mean. Well, especially have if, like, one purse for gambling, one purse for fun. And that's how it is. I remember you and Otis telling me like right before I was going to start like playing craps for the first time. You're supposed to go to the casino with let's say like an allotted amount of money that you know you're going to lose. It's that's, that's just game. So it's just entertainment for you, dude. Yeah, I I would never phrase it that way, but mm-hmm. yeah. I, actually, I don't know if I would ever say that cuz my thing is um don't bring your debit card to the casino. Ah. That's my only rule. Cash only, baby. <laughs> well, you know, once you have your debit card in your pocket, an eight dollar charge in the ATM doesn't seem like a problem anymore, dude. Well, they're giving you free drinks at these like high roller tables for a reason. At the regular tables, yeah, because they're yeah, because they're like, okay, we saw that you spent five hundred bucks. Here is a shot of whiskey. They feel for you. bad for us. Yeah, they know. And then, <laughs> hey you, man, just tip the girl, and uh, we'll call it squids. And you're like, all right, <laughs> all right. I mean, I don't know. I lost about two bands while no, but, I was at this table. What if I let you hold? one more chip and you're like oh yeah okay dude after i'll give it right back to you in five minutes (laughs) yes i I, they're literally just asking us to hold it for them realizing the the value of chips of these plastic chips clay of like of clay chips thank you i've never really understood you know you see it in movies all the time but like up until the point like where they actually where you actually give them cash and they give you chips you don't understand the the value behind that like at least for me yeah and the first time you start winning and like you realize like there are some pretty standard things like a black chip is a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, pink chip is five hundred dollars. And so like suddenly, you know, you've always seen these things and like when I was in South Lake I had hit a couple of good good tables and I walked away, I'm looking down at my hand, I'm like, I have three fucking black chips in my hand. Mm, damn, dude. And you didn't even know it at the time. You just looked at it and you're like, oh, because when I play blackjack and I start winning, I put down my initial, and when I start winning, I just pocket it, and I don't count, because nice. Kenny Rogers told me not to count my money at the Rest table. Rest in peace, Kenny Rogers, That's dude. You, baby, the gambler. Yeah. Um, uh, there's always time to count your money when the deal is done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to gamble in Las Vegas. You gotta, at least, you know what? No, no, but like when I say that, like gamble hard. hard. Yeah, of course. Obviously, there, there's casinos. Are, I'm going to hit you're some. You're going this week? I'm going uh, this Friday. The weekend of the first? Yes. Um... um I might have some money for you to put down on some prop bets. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You just okay. you just put it down for me at the bookie place, probably at the Wyndham. That's where you're staying. Yeah. They'll have a they'll have a booth, and I'll, and if I win, I'll go pick it up and I'll split. It and I'll give you ten percent. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Just uh, communicate with me how to do that. All that stuff. It's easy, easy peasy, Bart. Um, uh, also, I am now a bigger fan of slots than I was before because I was doing so well on them uh, the last time I was there. And you hit. It's it's slots are fun if it's not your last resort. Right, if you're on your last fifty cent and you're crying doing a one cent slot machine, it's pretty sad. Oh yeah, but uh, but if you're but if you're up seventy five bucks, put seventy five bucks in a slot machine. That's how you're gonna win a hundred bucks. Just play some fucking yeah. slots. Dude. Bet bet max bet max, max bet, bet max every bet. single fucking two bucks time. every single time every you hit a button. Single, uh, two bucks on a one cent slot machine is gonna win you back at least seventeen dollars. Yeah, I remember I spent like uh when I first started gambling. Because I was of age to do so, I would just do the penny slots, but I would do like the lowest amount. But I was getting lucky, so it took me like two hours to win like fifteen bucks. And I was like, here. "Oh, I could buy myself a drink. This is not that bad, man. Not that bad." Um, Honestly, being absolutely hammered at two in the morning, just barely sober enough to push that max bet button, is when you win the most. I, I think bet. They, I think the cameras know and the slot machines know when you're super fucked up. Oh, this guy's drunk. He's the had trick, a shit night. Get, let, let, let's let's help the trick out. is to be like, okay, time to go. That's what it is. Because they'll let on you, the last hit. They'll let you hold two, three thousand dollars mm-hmm. because they know they're gonna get back nine, uh, two hundred, nine hundred, ninety nine of it. It just blows my mind that there are so many eyes on you in a casino. Zero More than you know, privacy. I when I was there last time, I think I might have even said this. There was a point where like I could see the security guy coming to tell me like the casino was closing because with COVID, casinos closing now, which was yeah. really weird. But then I would like win right as soon as I saw him coming up behind me, and then he'd be like, "All right," and then he'd like turn around and walk away because <laughs> they're not gonna kick somebody out who's winning. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's just not business. You know what I mean? So like, and twice, twice did I see him and the waitress like come up to like come say something to me, and then like I would hit 
big again and then they like just all right they turn around and walk away and all it's right like, he's winning let's not take him away exactly that makes sense dude so i'm down to like do like a few quick like uh hits at the casino and throw whatnot. a couple throw well i mean maybe not anymore because there's no like five dollar roulette bets anymore where you can throw mm-hmm. like ones on the numbers yeah. they're probably all gonna be like 15 or 20 bucks mm-hmm. but throw 40 bucks on black yeah, why the hell not? You know what I mean? You're not gonna. You might get just forty bucks back, mm-hmm. but then when you do that, then take that forty and start picking numbers. Your I know birthday, I'm gonna Mel's be spending birthday. like a a good amount of money there because we're going there. Um, At Nobu alone. Bro. Saturday night, um, we have like a a dinner show reservation for uh, these people. It's an homage to the Rat Pack. Nice. And so they're doing that, which I had uh, mixed feelings about because like. I, I love that era of music, obviously. Bro, but, it's it's a Las Vegas show. Yeah. It's going to be good. Okay. I know it's going to be great. Yeah. But I'm, at the entire time, gonna I'm going to be wishing that like, oh, I wish. It was wish... the real ones? Yes. Well, hey, bro. We can't see the real ones. I, got I know. To, I saw the Beatles impersonators, and I was like, this is great, because they perform songs that even the real Beatles did never perform. Because like. I've never seen like impersonators. I've seen like- uh, Oh, they're fun. Tribute bands, but and those That's are like hit or fun. miss, yeah. depending on where you're seeing them. But For like sure. impersonators and whatnot, it, it sounds fun. We'll see. I, but And I'm excited. Look, casinos get good entertainment. Even if it's like a shitty show, it's still- they're still performing well, in, Vegas. in Vegas. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you should try and check out, if you have any more time, the Neon Museum. Mm, the, okay. If, if there's a day that you guys have nothing planned in the in the like the morning time, oh, well, you're only there for a couple of days. Um, we check in on Friday mm-hmm. at noon, and Perfect. we check out Monday at noon. At noon, baby. Um, then and are you you're flying? Of course, flying. Yes. What time's your flight on Monday? Is it like at like it's two? Like ten thirty. At oh, night? on Monday. On Monday. Um, no. If we're uh oh um, what do you call it? Actually, no, no, no. We check out even earlier. I should be landing back here around one p.m. Oh, lame. I was going to say, if you have a later flight, you can check out, just have the hotel hold your bags, go to the museum, Mm -hmm. and then on the way home, grab your bags and go to the airport. We might have, we have. If you have time, if you have three or four hours to kill, hop in a car and go. We have a lot of fucking museum. The Neon Museum, the Museum of Neon, excuse Mm -hmm. me, um, is incredible. It's one of the places that I've always wanted to go. That and the Gangster Museum, two things that I've never gotten to do, but I want to do. The Gangster Museum has a prohibition style bar underneath that you can drink in. Oh, I want that. I want to do that. Oh, man. I love Vegas. Vegas is so much fun. It's you saying prohibition bar makes me think about like drinking. Drinking's fun. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. Yeah. Drinking when we were in high school, when it was forbidden, <laughs> even funner. Forbidden? It's forbidden. It was hey, the forbidden fruit. I, we, I, we had a good friend uh, tell me once that stolen Cheez Its taste better than Cheez Its. Yeah, there's something. Free 99 things taste way better than 3 99 It's a five-finger so. discount. That's what it is, dude. I've only stolen one thing once in my life. Why don't you tell us about it right now? Because I know exactly what you're talking about. Because you were there with me, dude. And was I the only one who didn't steal anything? Yes. I was. Yeah. Yep. I mean, because uh, I respect capitalism. Hey, but <laughs> oh, because capitalism is the, the the it's the 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 fruit of this country. Honestly, it's why America is the greatest. It's actually why California itself is can become its own economical yes, we are, entity. We have the fifth biggest GDP in the world, California alone. Wild. This one of fifty states can really just separate, and we're I think the eleventh most successful economically. Entity. Imagine if we could export pot on a global scale. Oh, and we're getting there dude i think we are we are getting there like me and you personally on the level of shipping pot out internationally dude if i was a drug dealer i want to do it like um uh, quentin tarantino style the way quentin tarantino was in pulp fiction with the bathrobe and being like all right get the fuck in i'll call the wolf and he'll clean the blood off of the the back seat wasn't that not even his house that's the girl said he's banging's house right it's not even his place oh i think so dude um um I recently was playing Grand Theft Auto again with a friend who had never seen Grand Theft Auto Five, and so I was showing him like, "Oh, well, this is my apartment, and this is my crack house." And then my my <laughs> just the the term crack house continue. My weed warehouse got raided by the police, and so I had to go in there, and I did not win the gunfight. I got killed and uh, lost everything. And she was like, "Whoa, there's like actual like ramifications." Yeah, yeah, dude. And I was like, "Yeah, now I have to go." restart this whole business again and like i was like and you know i was like you know why i was sitting on all, all that pot it's because i was waiting for you to get grand theft auto so we could go and sell it but then i told you i don't have the disc for it the disc is like 15 dollars at target yeah you're right i gotta i gotta do it and when you buy the disc now you get a code for two million free dollars an apartment a business a bunch of 10 like 10 free cars like half the cars that i drive around now are free cars that they gave me you look like a gta character right now i'm not gonna lie feel like your entire outfit 
the baddies can't see the, the lower half of your body. I, I just does came from not work. match. No, I just does came from work. Match your I, work in a fi- I work in fitness, and so the bottom <laughs> half of me is is fitness oriented. You you look like you're going to a a, a Zoom party that is Hawaii themed. My mom would love you right now. She loved me when I walked in. What are you talking She'll about? She'll love you even more. She wants Hawaii anything and everything. Want to do an improv scene? I do. I do want to do an improv scene. Uh, don't forget to add the reverb. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight at the Copacabana, we bring you highly irrelevante. <laughs> it's now turned into like a wrestling match. <laughs> Luchador <laughs> announcer style. <laughs> well, now I got to do it all over again. Again? Okay, fine. Do it again. Don't put reverb on this one. Highly relevant. Hi, oh, sir. Would you like anything in your in-flight meal? You, we could have in-flight meals? <laughs> they told me at a first time here. This is first class. Uh, you get us anything you want. We will literally suck your dick if you want. Um, I'm in a committed relationship. That's my girlfriend, Sarah, right there. So yeah, I'm going to no, pass we have up a on male the fellatio. He can take care of her as well. No, that's not what it is. It's oh. just a whole like, you know, mouth to my like genitalia thing that I have to pass up on. But that's I'll, I will, I, I, I'll, I'll, can, do you guys have a menu or like literally anything I can say? You know, our chef is a four star Michelin rated chef and he's been working on this Boeing 787 for the last three years. He makes an exquisite meal. I'm sure there's not anything you could think of uh, that he couldn't make, to be honest with you. I mean, I've only ever flown coach prior to this, but like, <laughs> I mean. Oh, we could tell. Yeah, my cousin's uh, Arnel Panetta, the lead singer of Journey. Oh, I thought you looked familiar. Yeah. Oh, that's sorry, sir. That's like pseudo racist. <laughs> not all of us look alike. There's honestly no way, but I'm sorry I offended you. I will still take up your offer on whatever I can get here. Okay. Um. All right. I guess we'll start off with drinks. What would you like to drink, sir? An adios, motherfucker. Well, okay. Watch your language. This is first class, but sure. I think um, I think our bartender can whip something up for you. But okay. uh, let me uh, let me go find out for you. All right. Sounds good. Cut to the wait or the steward and the bartender. Hey, man. Uh, I got some jerk over here. He wants an adios. What? What is he? A twelve-year-old? It's his first time in first class. Just give him one; he'll pass out. It'll be fine. We don't even have like the best ingredients. Well, we we have the best ingredients, yeah, I know. but we don't have the shit ingredients that make to an make audio it, motherfucker. Yeah, I know. So, look here. Use the Don Julio nineteen forty-two. Okay. Use um use the Stoli Elite. Okay. And then for the gin, we'll we'll use um, shit. I don't know. We'll use Boodles. We'll use a cheap one on that okay, one. Okay, yeah, we'll do okay. that. He's not gonna know. He's not gonna know the difference. Well, yeah, I mean, we have carousel, AMF. don't we? Or no? I mean, yeah, of course we have okay. carousels in the back one. He'll be fine. He's he's okay. not okay. Cut back. Here you go, sir. Your adios, motherfucker. This is the best AMF I've ever seen. Well, honestly, sir, we only have top shelf booze here, and so it is honestly going to be the best one you've ever tasted as well. And this is like that's not even a candy cherry. That's a real cherry inside. Honestly, that cherry was grown in our luggage compartment. You guys have a cherry farm in your luggage compartment. We have a greenhouse, sir. Have you never flown? Virgin Airlines? I've never flown. No, I do have Virgin Mobile, though. Um, oh, um, you shouldn't use that. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. That's a different company. I'm I'm sorry to have offended you. Same owner, different brand. Oh. Um, did you get a chance to peruse the menu, sir? Yes, I took a look and at all fifty of these pages. By the way, you were not kidding. The selection here is Exquisite. impeccable it's and fantastic. infinite yes okay i'll definitely go with the uh I'll, I'll go with the sasquatch elbow fantastic yes uh which is and how would you like that sasquatch elbow prepared i want it like uh, on the uh, the breading i want the breading on the outside oh generally we ask about the temperature of the cooking on the inside when you ask a question like that sorry first time uh, clearly flying. have yes. you ever had a steak before pal yes of course pink or no pink um brown duh <laughs> Sarah, who's this guy? And then, does she want anything? Uh, I'm just so tired. I took too much melatonin. Um, okay, do you I'll guys... be back with your food. Come back to the kitchen. Hey, uh, let me get the Sasquatch elbow, but medium rare. I overheard the guy that's ordering this thinks there's breading on it. You know what? I didn't want to fight him on that. Maybe... Does he really want the Sasquatch elbow? You know what? He, I don't think he understands that it's not actual Sasquatch, that it's just ground beef. It's actually it's actually not even ground beef. Hang on. I misspoke. I'm sorry, chef. It's actually chicken wings. 
Sasquatch elbow is what we call chicken wings in this airline. Sasquatch elbow. Sasquatch elbow is the sauce, the yeah. flavor of the wings. It's Sasquatch elbow brand. It's like buffalo, buffalo wings, sauce. but you know, bu- you're not eating actual buffalo. Thank you for explaining it to me, chef. Uh, the person who's been working under you for six years. Um, uh, cut back to serving. And here's Honey, those so Sasquatch for- elbows and uh, some wet naps for you, sir. Uh, excuse yes. me. Yes, sir. These are chicken wings. Yes, sir. I'm looking for Bigfoot's elbow. Mm. Now, I know I started off really calm and timid at first, but Sarah, my wife over here, is telling me Hello. that this is first class, baby, and that I am Arnel Pineda's, the lead singer of Journey, Journey yes. now, now cousin. Oh. I'm his cousin, You're and I need to start acting like this. Well, let me see if there's something the chef can do for you then, sir. Okay. I Maybe I misunderstood. Take these Sasquatch elbows back. Take my AMF back. Oh, so you drank all of it already. That's the problem. Fill it up. Yes, sir. And with the, I'm not going to order the Sasquatch elbow. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flip to a random page, page 47. And I'm going to order the butterfly wings a la carte, please. <clears throat> and thank you very much. Sir, so before I walk away, I just want to let you know it is not actually butterfly wings. Then what the fuck are we doing here, dude? Uh, well, you're flying to Ontario, Canada, uh, and I'm trying to do my job, sir. I understand that. But who made... Th- can, I, can I talk to your manager? Honestly, honestly... It's the pilot, and he's got way more to do than come and talk to you. Tell this isn't a restaurant, sir. This is just Virgin Airlines. Tell him to pull over. Pull over? Pull over. Sir, you have no idea how planes work. <laughs> come on. You're telling me if freeways have lanes where you could pull over that a plane doesn't? This is 2021, and my cousin is Arnel Panetta. <laughs> and if I say... If Arnel Panetta's cousin says to pull the fuck over, you're going to pull the fuck over. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, or okay. by God's okay. might, fine, I will fine. strike you down. Okay, please don't. Please put your fist down, sir. Uh, I will go talk to the pilot and see what I can do. <laughs> Cut to the steward knocking on the pilot's door. Excuse I'm me, flying sir. a plane. Excuse me, um, sir. I'm flying. Okay. Hi, may I come in? Hi. All right. Hi, Captain. <laughs> Co-Captain. Yes. Um, I yes. am so, so sorry, but we have a gentleman in the back we have a gentleman in the um uh, airline who's asking if we can and mind you sir this is from him this is not from me um if we can just pull over to the side of the freeway and you can go back there and speak to him uh he has a couple of complaints you realize that i can't pull a plane over yes sir and i know this is a very interesting predicament but he actually told me to come talk to you and then spit on me so that's why i'm see that's why i'm here talking to you um i think and also maybe if you could maybe ask him to stop spitting on me um all right you you have a driver's license i i i do here all right sit in my seat you're you're gonna be with shelby today oh co-captain you want me to fly with shelby yes okay i guess i'll sit in the Hi. <laughs> this is interesting. I've never sat in the pilot's chair before. Act like it. Act like you have to act oh, dominant. Sorry, sorry. Adam. Cut back to um, the pilot talking to uh, talking to <laughs> Arnel Pineda's cousin. Hey, hi. Are you are you Arnel Pineda's cousin? Yes, I am. And Mr. Pilot, might I say, have you ever seen a middle finger before, sir? Sir, I think I can predict where you're going with this. And yes, I've seen a middle finger on many people before. People walk around gloveless, so they're literally everywhere. Sir, can you stop flipping me off? Sir? Now, let me tell you. Have you ever heard the song Open Arms? Have you ever heard of it? Sir, I I understand where you're going with this. And... I'm assuming it has something to do with your cousin being Arnel Pineda, the lead singer of Journey Now. Um, and and now I come. Now listen, you fucking douche. I am blood cousins with the greatest karaoke singer that has ever lived. Uh, and as this insane thing is happening, uh, the oxygen masks fall from the <laughs> roof um, because 
there is a stewardess in charge of flying an airplane who she is not at all equipped to fly, and the airplane falls into the ocean. Uh, no soul survived. <laughs> and scene. scene. Wow. Crazy. Incredible. You are such a gifted actor. <laughs> By God. How do you do it? My question know. is, how do you sit on balls that big, sir? You have to just talk them up to your fupa, man. Whoa, and not they, the answer I was expecting at all. I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a quick answer. Good basically job. Basically a fanny pack, you know? Woof. Oh, man. That was uh, that was really fun, man. I looked like you had a good time. Yeah, my glasses are fogging up. My glasses fog up either when I'm, I'm gonna, getting shy yeah. or insecure or when I'm having a good time. Is it because your eyes sweat? Yes, maybe. I produce a lot of body heat. These glasses are so close to my face that the heat that my body produces has little area to like escape mm. so it just builds up and builds up and builds and comes out your eyes it's it come, have you ever had like oily eyelids from a long day okay and then you rub your eyes and then your eyes start stinging because you have oils on your eyelids um i i'm gonna say no <laughs> okay well i'm gonna say yes okay and you're lucky to say no but i'm that guy and uh i don't know what my angle is here but it's uh yeah, dude, my I guess my eyes sweat. I, I wash my face a lot because I know my, my eyes sweat and that I, hey, I get hey. You don't need to explain yourself anymore. Okay, thank you. We have a show coming out on Thursday. We watched a movie called Mortal Kombat. And uh, yes, we did do a Mortal Kombat movie previously in the past. That was Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Annihilation with Otis Parker. <laughs> Otis, make up a fatality right now for Alejandro. Quick, do some improv for once in your goddamn life. Finger popping his asshole to death. Oh, I would not buy that game. <laughs> I don't want to see all. Hey, did you guys see that new fatality on Mortal Kombat? <laughs> yeah. Which, which one? The finger popping the asshole one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which, my mom saw that too. She took the game away from me after. We she's don't like, even know who that character is. Alejandro I, Middleton. <laughs> yeah, weird DLC. I didn't pay for it. <laughs> it actually <laughs> broke my system. Why did this download? I didn't approve of this download. <laughs> Thanks, Mortal Kombat, for giving me AIDS of the eyes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, and I have to say, I love this one way more. This movie blows so that one better. out of the water. So fucking good. So much more. Um, no I, one should ever watch the uh, uh, part two, uh, Annihilation. Yeah. No one should watch that. But you should watch this. It's on HBO Max. It's in theaters. Yep, yep. Um, it is, I think, the start of a big franchise. Yes. I mean, they just they know how to make money. And they're doing it right for like a video game adaptation, but we'll talk about it. We will talk about it. That's a Thursday show. Save it for Thursday. We'll save it. We will save it. Um, don't forget to check out our website, guys, on icbtb.com. You can get all your merch and everything you need there. Find out a little bit more about us and get in contact with us if you have anything you want to say. Unless you're an asshole, you can text me that shit, bitch. Yeah. Or you know what? Leave us an audio message and we'll throw one right back at you. Um, I've been Alejandro. And I am and has all, I've, have, I've always been Christian. And this man needs a nap. So we'll see you guys on Thursday. Peace. Bye. Bye.